Whether you're doing electronics or playing with small motors or maybe powering an Arduino or something like that, sooner or later you're going to want a variable power supply that has good accuracy. And I built my first power supply in, I think it was about 1973. And over the years I have figured out how to produce a pretty much a, a bench grade uh, power supply with very good accuracy. And it begins with uh, just this circuit diagram and a, and a few simple modifications. This diagram is what you get when you buy like a, an LM317, an LM138, or an LM338 a variable power supply or, or voltage regulator, I should say more accurately. And as you can see, all you need is a voltage input. So this is a DC voltage input. Currently, I am using a power pack from a laptop computer. Uh, we have a, uh, a filter capacitor. We have a variable resistor right here, a 5K ohm uh, resistor and a 240 ohm resistor here and then an output uh, filter capacitor. And this is our positive out. And then of course, this is the common ground for both sides. Okay, so let's look at some of those changes you can make to this to create a very inexpensive DIY high accuracy power supply for your bench. This is the manufacturer's circuit diagram that we've been looking at. And I've made a few changes. We'll, I'll show you those in the diagram form before we go look at the real thing. Here they are. And as you can see, this part right in here has pretty much stayed the same. Um, what I've done is I've added an input fuse, which is a good idea, and an output fuse, which is another good idea. I've added a, a very large capacitors on the output to suppress spikes. I was working with walkie talkies and stuff uh, like that. And uh, that helped to uh, deal the, with the uh, uh, issue of clunk when you key the uh, mic. But the biggest change is right here. And I've added a, a variable resistor, a multi-turn type. So what's typically recommended is something that looks like this when in fact, uh, I put in something that looks like this. And the difference is this goes about 300 degrees uh, stop to stop. And this goes multiple turns stop to stop. And so what that allows me to do is go from, uh, instead of going from say zero to or three to 35 volts, as it says here, um, or on the output, it's like 1.25 to 35. So I'm going from 1.25 to 35 volts in 300 degrees, or I'm doing it in multiple turns, probably five turns. I think this one does. So as you can tell, that will give me a much finer, uh, finer output voltage control. So this will actually control down to hundreds of a volt. And if not uh, really, really, really solid tenths of a volt. Okay. So now let's go look at the actual device. Uh, I will say that this is the manufacturer's uh, circuit, and I, this is what I would recommend. I'm using the Radio Shack version. Mine is so old that I actually am using the Radio Shack recommended circuit. So, uh, but I would stick with the, uh, the manufacturer's circuit diagram. Okay, so let's go look at that. Let's take a walk around the outside of the box. First, this is the voltage meter out here. I'll make sure you can see it uh, shaded a little bit and you can see that I have to turn the knob pretty far to get it to move a tenth of a volt so if you put a voltage meter on here you can actually get down to hundreds of a volt um, and so this is uh, again the voltage meter this is the multi-turn uh, resistor that controls everything and we'll sh look at the insides here in a bit this is a cigarette lighter plug from when I was working with uh, handy talkies and of course the output, the positive and minus. Uh, nothing much on the sides. On the back side, it's a little bit interesting. We've got the on-off switch. You can see where it's been through several iterations in the past. Uh, this is the input from our uh, power module. This is a uh, power module from a laptop computer. And frankly, that's about the safest option because you don't have to deal with the high voltage AC, the 220 or whatever else, uh, you know, your country uses. And of course, in the on off switch. So, um, yeah, there's that. Um, on the bottom side, you can see here, 
where I have put silicone and this is to shield the two screws that hold the LM338K in this case uh, and it isolates them to make sure that nothing comes in contact with it because uh, whereas those are isolated from the case with some nylon uh, bushings they uh, well if you come in contact with them they would be uh, they would be uh, ground I believe okay and then you see two holes up here where it used to have a transformer in there and I got rid of the transformer because well just uh, higher voltage issues and and uh, lack of uh, power capability and so forth okay so that's the outside let's uh, take it apart and look on the inside let's open this beast up and take a look inside see how it works right away you can see some of the hacks and mods and whatever that have been happening over the years I'm, I'm planning on rebuilding this and making it beautiful once again like it was when I first built it uh, but let's see let's start over here this is the port where the uh, the uh, laptop power pack plugs in and you see this capacitor is in the diagram and that's a filter capacitor I added this capacitor down here and that's to help smooth the input power uh, coming in here, coming this way, we have a we have a fuse. So that's our input fuse, which is in the diagram. Comes through the switch, and then the positive comes over here and into the uh, input of the LM338K. From here, power comes out, goes to an output fuse. It's right here, and that comes up to this and to the output terminal, the positive output terminal. Uh, the other wire passes through here. You can see the black wires, but uh, it comes over to here. And of course, that's the negative terminal. This strange little circuit board you see in here, that is for the Radio Shack version of this. I, like I said, this is not the manufacturer's uh, version of the circuit. This is Radio Shack's version. And when I upgrade it, I'm going to go back to the manufacturer's. But you can see, for example, a little tantalum capacitor down there and some other things. So what this board does is this makes all the connections that we saw on the right side of the diagram. And it puts them all in one little place just to make it easier. Um, passing over here, oh, I forgot to mention, this is an output capacitor. So this helps smooth the output uh, power. And this is one of those times where I hack something quickly because there used to be a much larger capacitor in here, but it went bad. And uh, I was working on a project and I just wanted to get it done. So I grabbed something out of my parts box and patched it in there. Um, okay, so where were we? Um, there is the voltmeter over here, which I added, which is a very nice addition. You don't have to use your external voltmeter to know how much power, how much voltage is coming out of here. And then there's the star of the show, which is this multi-turn resistor. What was originally in here was this thing. And this is just, you know, a single turn. Uh, with this, you get, you know, you get an accuracy of two to three volts. With this, you get a tenth of a volt, maybe even a hundredth of a volt, depending on which, which type you use and how many turns you got going on. Um, you may wonder about this space here. And it used to have a massive capacitor, or capacitor, a massive transformer. In fact, this one I'm holding in my hand. But it was only good for one and a half amps and uh, up to 12 volts. And so the uh, laptop power supply is good for four amps and 16 volts. So hence the uh, modification. I also lost a lot of weight uh, in getting rid of that transformer. So, and also the dangers of dealing with 110 volts that was inside the box. Okay, so that's a little bit of the history and I think we've pretty much completed the uh, the tour of it. Well, okay, so that's it for a DIY high accuracy power supply. I hope you found that useful and interesting in your home electronics projects.